This video looks at binomial distributions and calculating binomial probabilities. The key issues here, the things that you need to master, is the ability to look at a problem and recognize whether it is a bino binomial problem, and then recognize how the formula works for calculating binomial probabilities, and then finally recognizing how R has some built-in functions that do those calculations quickly and easily. Okay, let's go to it. We'll be a little informal here and just look at a pen and paper discussion. The idea that we're looking at is binomial distributions. Guessing on a multiple choice test is a good metaphor for a binomial distribution. Suppose that we had a multiple choice test where the only possible answers were A, B, C and D. So if we're guessing, we've got a 25% chance of getting any individual question correct. We've got a 75% chance of getting any individual question incorrect. Now, let's suppose that we had just three questions on the test. And let's examine what happens in getting those three questions in order right and wrong. I'm going to keep track of this with the binary tree. So let's suppose that if we're going up, it means that we got that particular question right. So here this first branch of the tree is talking about the first question on the test. We have a 25% chance of getting that particular question correct if we're just guessing. We have a 75% chance of getting that question wrong. If we get the first question right, then the second question, we've got a 25% chance of getting it right and a 75% chance of getting it wrong. So notice these branches are just referring to the questions, the Bernoulli trials is what those are sometimes called, as we go along. So the first question, we could either get it right or we could get it wrong. The second question, we could either get it right or we could get it wrong question, if we got the first question wrong, then the second question we could either get it right or we could get it wrong. Now suppose that we're looking at just a three question test. Then the next question, the same thing happens regardless of what's happened in the previous questions. On that third question, we've got a 25% chance of getting it right and a 75% chance of getting it wrong. So if we got the first one right, the second one right, then we still have a 25% chance of getting the third one right, and a 75% chance of getting it wrong. And similarly with each of these other branches. So I've sketched in those probabilities. So if we go up three times in a row, that means that the first question we got right, the second question we got right, and the third question we got right. We could get the first question right, the second question right, and the third question wrong. Notice some of these other branches. We get the first one wrong and the next two right. The first one wrong, the second one wrong, and the third one right. So that's looking at all the possible ways that we could possibly answer uh, the questions on this three question test. Now, let's calculate the probability associated with each of those different choices. Notice that there are eight different ways that somebody could could answer the the test as far as right and wrong goes. Now the probability of getting all three of them right, there's only one way that we can do that and that's going up this branch. The probability of getting all three of them right will be 25 percent times 25 percent times 25 percent or 0.25 to the third power. On the other hand, if we get the first one right, the second one right, and the third one wrong, the probability of that happening is going to be 25 squared times 75%. Uh, okay, and now we can fill out all of these others. Notice this one. 25% times 75% times 25%, that's 
that's really getting two of them right, so 0.25 squared, and one of them wrong, times 0.75. So there I've filled in the rest of those details for each one of the different branches. <coughs> you count up how many times you're going up. That'll be 0.25 uh, squared in this case because we're going up twice and we're going down once and so on. Okay, so that's how we calculate those, those and leaves, the probability of, of each of the different ways of answering the multiple choice of of guessing at the multiple choice test. Now on a three question test there are three, there are four possible scores that you could get on the test. You could get a zero because you missed them all. You could get exactly one of them right. You could get exactly two of them right or you could get all three of them right. We'd like to calculate the probabilities of each of those events occurring. What's the probability of getting none of them right? The only way that that can happen is to come down this branch. You've got to miss every one of them. The probability of getting a score of zero is going to be 0.75 to the third power. That's the only way that that can happen is to come down that particular branch. Now, calculating the probability of getting exactly one of them right is a more interesting problem. To get exactly one right on a three-question test means that you get exactly two of them wrong. So let's see. Here's one place where I get exactly one right and two wrong. Here's one where I get one wrong, one right, and one wrong. The other possibility is get two of them wrong, the first two wrong, and the third one right. There are really three ways to get uh, exactly one of them right, those three branches that we've marked out in, in orange. The probability of exa getting exactly one of them right is going to be this probability plus this one plus this one, and of course all of those probabilities are exactly the same. So the probability of getting exactly one of them right is going to be three times. I just noticed that I had made an error there. In this case, we have a 0.75 times 0.25 times 0.75. So this is 0.25 times 0.75 squared. Of course, on each of these branches where we're only getting one of them right, it'll be 0.25 times the two that we get wrong, 0.25. 7, 5 squared. So it'll be the probability of getting exactly one right will be 3 times 25% times 75% squared. On the other hand, the probability of getting exactly two of them right will mean that I've got two right and one wrong. Well, there's two rights and one wrong. And that would be that probability, which would be 0.25 squared for the two that are right times 0.75, the one that's wrong. So here's a second place where I'm getting two of them right and one of them wrong. And here's a third place where I'm getting one wrong but two right. That means I'm getting two right and one wrong. Okay, so the probability of getting exactly two of them right is I'll need to add up this amount plus this amount plus this amount they're all the same amount, so that's going to be 3 times 0.25 squared, because we're getting two of them right, times 0.75, the probability of getting one wrong, and we're getting exactly one wrong. Finally, we'll look at the probability of getting all three of them wrong. The only way that that can happen is to get every one of them wrong and that probability is going to be 0.75 to the third power. The difficult thing is figuring out how many times this happens. Building this tree diagram could be rather challenging as soon as we already, when we're uh, just three questions, there are eight different branches that are involved. 
If we have four questions, there's 16 branches involved. Five questions, there's 32 branches involved. If you had 10 questions, there would be 1,024 different branches that you'd have to investigate. So the thing that we've got to, to think about is how do you decide how many times you get exactly the number that you're interested in. So if we had a 10 question test instead of a three question test, how would we find how many times we got exactly four of them right? Some special notation is used for, for uh, binomial probabilities. The probability of getting exactly x right in a multiple choice test that has n questions in the test with a probability of success being p. Okay, that kind of notation is used. And the formula is this. That's going to be equal to, well, it'll be p, the probability of getting it right, raised to the x power and q, the probability of getting it wrong, q is always 1 minus p. Notice up here, the probability of success was 25%. The probability of failure was 1 minus 25%. So the, it'll be p to the x power, the number of times that you had success, times q raised to the number of times that you had failure. Well, if you had n questions and you had x successes, then you'd have n minus x failures, okay? So that would be the probability of going down any one of the branches that had x successes and n minus x failures. The question is, how do you find this amount? The idea is to think about those n questions, and we need to choose a committee out of those n questions where x of them are right. So that's how many times that will happen. Notice in this case, if we looked at the combination of out of three, we want to find two of them that are right. So we're looking for this number right here. We know how to calculate that formula. That's the, the combination formula. It's going to be 3 factorial divided by 3 minus 2, that would be 1 factorial, times 2 factorial. And just working that out, that's a 3 times 2 times 1. And this is just a 1 times a 2 times 1. And of course the 1's all cancel. And the 2, that gives us a 3. Okay. So in a more challenging problem, if we were interested in finding the probability of getting exactly seven questions right on a 10 question test where the probability of success was 25%, then we could find that by looking at counting up the combinations of out of 10, choose seven of them to be right. That's gonna be a challenging thing to calculate. And then 0 0.25 raised to the seventh power because we're looking at each one of the branches where we had seven successes times 0.75. That's the probability of failure here of, uh, and there's gonna be three failures. Uh, seven successes and three failures, and we need to count up the number of com combinations, the different branches where that would happen. Now that will take a little bit of calculation because d this by itself would be 10 factorial all over 3 factorials times 7 factorial. Boy, that R knows how to do this. R has a command called the density binomial. Density binomial of the number, the score that you want on the test, 
the number of questions on the test and the probability of success. So if you can recognize that a problem is a binomial kind of a problem, then you can use d binome to find the the uh, the probability of of any one of the individual scores. And R will just do this this formula uh, for you at that point. We'll look at uh, other videos where we're actually using that command. Okay, there's the idea. You recognize when you've got a binomial distribution when you can model it much like a multiple choice test where you're looking at finding the score on that multiple choice test. Then, you, then you're looking at the probability of, of each of the different scores. This, begins, this becomes a discrete probability distribution. And uh, this is the formula for that. We talked about where that came from. And this is a command in R that calculates that formula for us.